Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to some more Five Nights at Freddy's news. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today, the Fazbear Fright 12th book, some more Sanshi, products being re-released, the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative, and most importantly, Illumix and Disney, yes, the frickin' Disney, doing a collaboration. So let's not waste any more time, of course the most important topic we have to start with today is the subscription button. It's this big bright red button down there at the bottom of the video, it says subscribe in white. And when you click on it, it turns gray. Get that, can you believe that? And then there's this like button, like what's up with that? It turns blue when you press it? I don't know, maybe you should try clicking them, see what happens. Alright, first up we have a very quick update on the Showtime Daco plushie. If you missed my video on that, I'll leave it linked right there. And normally I would say, hey, maybe you should go and get it, but unfortunately you can't anymore. Luckily though, the campaign for the plushie succeeded and it will be shipping out sometime in mid-October. And speaking of merchandise, Sanchi is back at it again this time re-releasing their FNAF tokens. They say the machines at Freddy Fazbear's will eat your tokens, but they're not the only machines with an appetite. The five Nights at Freddy's collectible tokens are back. Follow the link below to get yours. As you can see, you got Chica, Bonnie, Foxy, and Freddy all coming back for the tokens. They look fantastic. I've already bought them. I will be making a video on them when they get here. And so hopefully sometime soon we can see the Sanchi Celebrate poster and also some of their t-shirts come back. And now we have some very interesting info on the One Night at Flumpty's ports. You see, yesterday Click Team made a tweet saying, need help with a few special projects. Any professional FNAF programmers who use Game Maker Studio, please reach out to us. If you don't know what Game Maker Studio is, basically it's a game engine in which the Flumpty's franchise was made in. And so Click Team announcing that they need some help with a FNAF project that is in Game Maker Studio, yeah. This is the Flumpty's console ports. Now, they didn't necessarily say Flumpty's, but come on, it's the only fanverse game in Game Maker Studio. And so I'm hoping they didn't say this is the case, but this is my speculation. We have One Night at Flumpty's 1 and 2 already out on mobile, and so I'm hoping that this announcement means One Night at Flumpty's 3 is done on mobile, and now they're moving on to the console ports of the three games. That's my guess, so hopefully sometime soon we can see an update in regards to all the ports for Flumpty's. Moving on now, this is kind of old news, but I couldn't remember if I had talked about it, so back in June, we actually got an audio preview for The Friendly Face. The 10th book in the Fazbear Frights book series being released on September the 1st. Of course, it's copyrighted, so I can't play it in the video, but if you do want to hear it, it's linked down below. Now, we're going through all the topics pretty fast, but I do want to pause for a second and remind you to subscribe. And also, I want to take a lot of time to talk about the next topic, which is the Fazbear Frights book collection. The second one, to be more specific, which has all 12 books in the Fazbear Frights book series. And yes, I say 12 because we finally have the cover for the 12th Book. And it has a mother frickin' shark robot on it. What is this, dude? Yeah, so book 12 is gonna have a shark animatronic. I'm super excited about this. This is, this is amazing. I love this. And just to catch you guys all up to speed, the 12th book is so far exclusive to the second box set. And it has scrap stories from the Fazbear Freight books, which never got added into the official books. Which is kind of weird. I don't really know, like, thinking about it now, like, what are scrap stories? Are they incomplete? I hope not because then, well, what's the point of buying it if we're not going to get a complete story? But taking a look at the image for the second box set, we can actually see a lot of mistakes. You can see a lot of color inconsistencies as well as Fetch being completely renamed to Tex. So I hope that all of these mistakes can be fixed before the box set comes out in December. And also we can see that the 12th book which has the shark animatronic is called Felix the Shark. In my opinion, that's kind of a lame name for a shark. Also kind of a weird name for a book title. I don't know, it seems like there's a lot of mistakes on this image, so maybe this isn't the name of the book and it's just the name of the character that was put on the image. But that is all the news we have so far on the 12th 
book Felix the Shark in the second Fazbear Frights box set, again coming out in December. Moving on, we have a quick update on Pup Goes Evergreen, one of the games in the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. Kane made a tweet saying, we finished the enlargement update for the art room, the arcade room, and the kitchen, so I've added them back to the game jolt page. And as you can see, this is the new enlarged art room, the brand new kitchen, as well as the brand new arcade room. Kane also made an update the other day saying that the server room is now finished. We're now back to where we were with the rooms pre and beginning. Six out of 11 are finished. Big thanks to Garrett Tube and Mr. Nobody for working hard on this part of the project. Pretty sure it took less than a month onto the remaining rooms. So there's a quick update on the rooms for the Pop Goes Pizzeria, but we're not done with Pop Goes just yet because Kane made a very bold move changing the thumbnail of the game on the Game Jolt page. Changing it to this horrendous image. Oh my gosh, Kane, what is this? What were you thinking? Putting the text behind the characters? Pfft, dude, that looks so bad. Nah, but seriously, for some reason, people are freaking out about this whole thing on Game Jolt and on Twitter. And so Kane put up a poll on both Game Jolt and Twitter saying, all right, which one is better then? With the two options being the thumbnail without the text and the other being the one with the text. Right now, the one with the text is winning on both Twitter and Game Jolt. And I was just messing around before. Don't worry, I, I don't hate the thumbnail. All right, I don't hate Kane. I think it looks amazing, actually. All right, so now let's move on to the big topic for today because freaking Disney is collaborating with Illumix. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, the other day, Illumix just made a tweet saying, what have we been up to? Well, we have some truly magical news. We're beyond delighted to announce that we've been selected by Disney to join the 2021 Disney Accelerator. All right, so first off, I know I like to crap on Illumix and their video game a whole lot, but... Truly and honestly, Illumix, big congratulations. This is actually insane. I'm so happy for you guys. Who would have thought we'd see it? Huh? Who would have thought 2014, oh yeah, FNAF and Disney works out perfectly? And yet here we are. So I see a lot of people confused about what this means. Are we going to get a Disney-themed FNAF AR skin? Is Illumix being bought by Disney? Is Disney buying the rights to FNAF? Is that who Scott is giving the rights to FNAF 2? Uh, no, not at all. In fact, it's, it's kind of underwhelming if I'm being honest. But again, I'm still happy for Illumix. Illumix actually linked an article explaining what the Disney Accelerator program is. And it seems like not a whole lot of people read it, so I'm going to read it for you guys right now. <clears throat> the Walt Disney Company today announced the companies that will participate in the 2021 Disney Accelerator, a program designed to accelerate the growth of innovative companies from all around the world. Only eight companies have been chosen for the three-month membership program that will connect them with the creativity, imagination, and expertise of Disney, including by providing unique access to Disney's leadership team. And you can see Illumix Illumix is an augmented reality company that allows brands to create immersive experiences across entertainment and e-commerce. I think a lot of people forget that FNAF AR isn't the only thing that Illumix does. Well, FNAF is their first game, you know, they are still a augmented reality mainly business. And that's why the announcement wasn't made on the FNAF AR website. It was made by Illumix. So really, this doesn't have anything to do with FNAF AR, more so the company of Illumix overall. So unfortunately, or fortunately, how you look at it, no Disney-themed FNAF AR skins. So yeah, no, Illumix isn't being bought out, FNAF isn't being bought by Disney, none of that crap. It's really just Illumix being taught by the most creative team on the planet, Disney, which hopefully can help them out a lot with this three-month program. So yeah, some very very exciting news for Illumix and very exciting news for the FNAF community with all the rest of the news in the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.